Is this the real LAFC? Finally, we've been talking so much about not scoring goals and what's going on with the offense. One, two, three, four, five. Not too bad, boom, baby. Boom, boom, five. How you like that, Dave? The goal drought is Reeves, over. we got a handful of goals to talk yes. about. LAFC getting it done. It sounded a little bit like this. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Right. <laughs> hey, you know when right. LAFC is cooking up, Dave is cooking up on the microphone. That is for sure. Anytime the action gets going, the intensity, Dave turns it up a notch, and we love you for that, Dave. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, brother. What a weekend. And yeah. we'll, welcome to LAFC Plus. We'll be diving into it, of course. This is LAFC Plus, the podcast, episode six. So we're one goal or one episode ahead of the goals over the weekend. So almost matched <laughs> up here. Yeah. <laughs> episode six already. He is Mario Rees. He's the producer of LAFC on the radio. I'm Dave Denholm, play by play. And we are the hosts of LAFC Plus. And Mario, what a weekend it was, really. Beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Really kind of. D- garbage weather on saturday when we woke up well i get up pretty early i gotta admit i I can't sleep great on game days i actually was downtown i went uh to go get some pizza uh no this is like i don't know 11 o'clock kind of early for lunch right so yeah let you in i go but i'm slipping and sliding downtown walking to my pizza place that i like and it it was yeah kind of nasty but and then i get oh this is funny then i get a text from you like (laughs) Bosch, you know, like or whatever you guys, yeah. Are and I'm like, yeah, of course. This is only a few hours later <laughs> after yeah. I ate. Well, not a whole pizza. I didn't eat a whole pizza. All right, come on. <laughs> but yeah, got to go to Whole Bosch. So we we crushed that, didn't we? What's your uh, what do we go to there? What's your uh, what's your thing? Because your your family oh. hits a Whole Bosch pretty hard, Mario. Oh yeah, the lunch special is my my go to all the yeah. time. I get the two uh, fish tacos with the ceviche, the mixed ceviche on the side. Oh, and I eat my ceviche with crackers, not tostada. I eat it with crackers. Okay. If you, yeah, you got to do that. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I had a great I had a great uh, Saturday. It was a jam packed weekend. Actually, Friday I went to a concert at the House of Blues of Anaheim, watched the Christian hip hop artists there, and then Saturday I had to wake up early for the ESPN LA. Uh, pickleball madness tournament which was rained out it was Ouch. rain yeah. all morning long so we we were there in the parking lot tailgating with with listeners and fans and having a great time and then once they called it boom i jetted out to downtown la hit you up dave hobosh you in and then of course <laughs> no question from dave i'm in pick me up so we go to hobosh and so- that is our pregame. that was lunch number two for me but <laughs> And the funny thing is, I was like, I'm talking to myself, right? I'm trying to, you know, yeah. I'm trying to watch what I eat. Like, be careful. Like, but I'm talking to myself as I'm heading over there. I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna go light because Mario and I always crush that uh, that lunch special. There's it's so much food, and it's mm-hmm. so good and so fresh. But I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just go like a taco or two small, you know, the fish tacos, nothing crazy. Now, yeah. once I got there, once 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 you get the you know the wafting smells coming mm-hmm. and just everybody enjoying it. And it's a good day to set the tone. There's so many uh, LAFC fans there already, too. So that's great, too. You're sitting there next to other, you know, LAFC, Black and Gold Faithful. uh, The people at Hobosh, they got the hats on as well, the LAFC hats on. So can't miss with Hobosh. Here's the facts. If you're not from LA, the next time you go, go there. Okay. Hobosh. H-O-L-B-O-X. If you're, you know, if you're not... If you are from LA and you haven't been, what are you waiting for? I mean, it's just you have to go. We look it up. We're not going to tell you where it is because we don't want to get too crazy busy, do we? Right. <laughs> no, yeah, of course we do, but yeah. And they are not like a sponsor of this or anything. We, you know, we just happen to destroy it every time we go. It's just the best. Like, oh, unbelievable. Yeah, get that lunch special. And it's I don't yeah. even know if it's on the menu anymore. Is it like? I don't know. Actually, I just say lunch special. They know what it is, and then exactly. boom, I don't even know if it's on the menu. Tell you the truth. Yeah, I'm no, we're not gonna we're not gonna hold your hands about this. Okay, you yeah. gotta go do it. You're a grown up, right? You have to go. That's the bottom line. So this is LFC Plus, and we are going to talk about this game too, Mario. You know, it was a great day because all of a sudden the weather changed. It was still cool, perfect day. It was very to cool in football, right? It was and, chilly. Uh, yeah, a little chilly. Had to put a little jacket on, but mm-hmm. a perfect night for football. Clouds, you know, everything blew out, and it just made it so crystal clear downtown. It just 
when you're in that booth and you look, as we look at it, you look to the left and see downtown through there. It is just spectacular most times. And t- that night wasn't any different. Oh, by the way, the performance then matched up, right? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. It was as good as Holbosch. That's what LAFC, how they played on that match. And it looked scintillating. You know, I don't use that word very often because it's just kind of a, it's been overused when it comes to football, but it was just absolutely brilliant football. What was your favorite, I guess, what was your favorite goal? Because there's plenty to choose from, obviously. Oh, wow. That's a tough question because, yeah, there was a lot of good goals. I kind of like the Atuesta goal where he just dove and just slid and just laid there, (laughs) arms out and just facing the ground while the crowd went crazy. That was pretty cool to watch. Uh, but Dave, there, there's you talk about one word. There's been a word uh, that is often used at uh, training facilities on the training ground or even on the pitch by by players and by by coaches. It's unlucky. You know, you, you have a good idea and then you take the shot and then it just misses. And, then, you know, the coaches say, great idea. Unlucky. That's been kind of like what LAFC <laughs> been going through the first couple of of uh, games Sadly, here. Right. True. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But that those times don't last long for LAFC of unlucky because the goals come, the goals come fast, and the goals come by the bunches. Yeah, so, I, I agree. And Nashville yeah. was just going to be the one that had to take it on the chin. You know, they were the mm-hmm. ones that, they were unlucky in a sense because mm-hmm. you knew the goals would come, and they finally did. And it really, you're right about that in the sense that LAFC have played. Now they played a couple of bad games bottom line. I mean, they had a couple of losses that were just not good, but really even against sporting Kansas city, I'm not saying they, they deserve to win or anything like that. Sporting Kansas city played them tough and they deserve to get the point as well. First Mm -hmm. game of the year, they, you know, Seattle probably could have had more goal. You know, it's more about the footballs look very good at times, actually. Yeah. It's just that the goals hadn't been coming, but then Nashville's like the unlucky one where everything does work out. And here's one of them here. This is Denis Buongo with his second goal of the match. He had that PK earlier. Plenty racing week. for the 18. Cutting it across in the middle. Twesta leaves it. Boy to the shot. Goal! Denny! Denny! It's two for him and three for LAFC. Yeah, that felt good. I, I felt good about it, honestly. Yeah. It was. It sounds crazy, but it was almost a weight off of my shoulders. I don't I mean, there's nothing I can do about them not scoring or winning or losing or anything, but... Just like, oh man, we need that. We just needed it, and we got we got everything we needed in that game, Mario. Yeah, and I want to play the uh, Twesta goal because that Twesta goal is where you turned it up and you got on your A game, and then you started flipping the Spanish in there. So let's hear that one. That was a lot of fun. Borga chips it in the middle. Header. Goal! It's Eduardo Twesta finishing off the run as Buanga fed it to his head. Brilliantly, it's five. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. I love it. I love it, Dave. Too much fun, <laughs> man. Yeah, thank you. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And it was just, uh, you know, just a great performance all the way around. Have to give some praise to the defense, too. I mean, Larice made one good, really good save, quite frankly. Great save. But that was yeah. about it. He didn't have to do mm-hmm. much else, Mario. The defense really... Uh, came to play as well. And we know a lot of guys were missing around the league, mm-hmm. you know, international duty. Every team had it. So what? These these points count. You got to get the win. And I also saw a different, a different hunger and determination from a couple of guys early on from the first whistle. Uh, yeah. First off, Christian Oliveira was playing, was applying so much pressure in his pursuit for the ball. He was a madman every time just trying to win that ball uh aaron long was out there uh pouring his guts out he has been doing that for the past two games now and then uh denny bawanga just so relentless even rocking the post a couple of times in the same sequence (laughs) but still ended up with two goals and an assist so yeah it was it was on for the black and gold yeah nobody had a bad game by any means but sometimes you do need to shout out these one one player who Really didn't show up on the stat sheet or anything. I thought, actually, I watched the game again, and I thought he was phenomenal was Mateusz Bogus. There was a lot of plays where little things, just little things in that false nine, where it's, it's not really his position, if you will, normally or whatever. You know, 
he's still getting used to it, but he had a couple of holdup plays and some passes that began sequences that ended up in good plays, you know, that maybe he doesn't get an assist or anything. Wow. He had a really tremendous performance too. And For we me, haven't the even, best he's played all year. We and haven't it, mentioned it, Timothy Tillman. Timothy yeah. Tillman, he got the party started. He got the goal party started. Yeah. And uh, I had a w- chance to interview him in the walk-off interview, and here's a little bit of that. A tough Nashville squad. How did you guys make it look so easy? I think, like I said, we were just very disciplined against the ball. Made it difficult for them to, to just get towards our goal. And then as soon as we were in the right spots, um, we were just dangerous uh, offensively. So, yeah, that's, that's what was the key tonight. How do you carry this momentum onto the road next week when you guys go into Colorado? Like I said, I think now, especially because all, all of us were on the scoreboard, um, we're just very confident and yeah, we, we just need to work hard this week. Maybe review the game, uh, analyze what we did good, what we, what we didn't do good, and then yeah. Big win tonight, Timmy. Congrats. Thank you. Oh, don't. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to go back to that almost. So talk about football fit check. That shirt you were wearing, Mario. Ah. You got to talk us through your wardrobe. I want to hear about your, by the way, that was great stuff from uh, you and Timothy after the game. I want to hear about your pregame routine. If you are fortunate enough, not that you ever would be, to drive into a game with Mario, I don't know how that would ever happen for anybody else except for, you know, a few of us. But you you end up having to leave him at his car, right? Not because he's, like, dropping you off at the front, you know, gate or anything. I'm not trying to... I'm going to the same parking spot Mario is after we went to Holbosch. <laughs> yep. Then Mario basically says, uh, you can go ahead. I got things I got to take care of here. And so I always have to just go ahead, grab my bags, whatever, all my gear, whatever I need. And Mario, you like you were in like some, I mean, for lack of a better word, for your standards, kind of a nasty outfit because of the... Oh, my God. Yeah, I was all soaking wet. My socks were wet. I don't mean that wet, in a bad my like, It sounds wet. worse than it is. Mario still dresses at a nine and a half when everybody else is at a four. I was coming out of the pickleball a tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah this I was is a nine and a half outfit tournament. for you, which is kind of filthy. You know, it's garbage. <laughs> but no, but yeah, you looked dressed down, I should say, because of the yeah. tournament that got rained yeah. out, as you said. But you have to, you always change. What's that deal, Mario? Like, I understand. I, you you change at your car before you come in. Now, you look great every game, right? You saw it right there on the interview with Timothy Tillman. If you're watching this on YouTube, you always look sharp, Natalie <laughs> clad, right? But why don't you just come that, uh, like, wh- why don't you just dress that way and just show Couple up? Couple reasons. Couple reasons. These are legit reasons. Uh, First well, of I'll all, be the judge of that. Now, I'm asking I'm a, the questions here. I'm a busy man. I'm a busy man. So I, Often coming from another gig or another, you know, okay. something that I'm doing on my schedule. Fair. So I got to change the outfit because I can't wear the suit all day long to some of the appointments that I got to get to. So gotcha. I carry the suit in the car. And uh, other times, if I am coming from home, I don't live very close to the stadium. I live in the Inland Empire. Shout out wow. to the IE. Anybody from the IE, hit me up on IG, Instagram, Twitter, uh, at I am Mario Ruiz. Uh, respect. Uh, but anyway, so you know, if you live in the IE, it's a bit of a trek to go to BMO Stadium. So That's I don't want to get the outfit all wrinkled. I don't yeah. want to get wrinkled up. Hang it up in the car. When you get there, either change in the parking lot or go <laughs> into the stadium and change in the booth. That's how I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems to work for him. That's all I'm going to say, everyone. That's, I mean, it works out well for him. <laughs> what do you think of his, uh, that? Uh, hit us in the comments if you're watching on YouTube or some of the places you uh, listen to these on your, uh, let us know. You can hit us up on uh, social media at Talk Soccer for me. Uh, Mario is at I am Mario Rees, I like his name. So, yeah, let us know about that routine. I just was wondering because, you know. Yeah, I mean, my I, phone just went off right now. I think I already got some tweets talking about my <laughs> outfit. But anyway, uh, and I had the wrong colors on, Dave. I had the wrong colors. I had the Nashville colors. It was navy blue and yellow. Yeah. I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> You're better than that, that, Mario. You're better than that. Yes. Uh, it worked out all right, though. Maybe you got to wear that uh, same outfit again, right? I'm not, I don't believe in love. <laughs> no, no, because that's kind of similar to the Galaxy, so we're not going to use oh, that. Oh, yeah, we're not that doing that the next game. Yeah, that's true. That's the next home game. You're right. But uh, Yeah, yeah. Moving on to a, a part of our history. It's something we like to talk about here. And uh, Danny Musovsky gets his first goal for Seattle. Kind of inspired mm-hmm. me. But it, it got me thinking more about uh, our history and Mario. And now we're getting to a point, what, this is the seventh season Right, we're ha- we've had a great run so far. We're getting to a point now, though, where 
we have a lot of players who used to play for LAFC, right? That's just a part yeah. of sports. Like at first, mm-hmm. there's a few guys that come and go, but now it's like you're looking around the, a lot of the league and you're like, whoa, okay, he used to play, you know, we had some time with him and we, you know. So now it's like I started to think who have been the most impactful former LAFC players? And I want people's lists on this, right? We're going to give you ours. We're going to talk a little bit about it. I have a list. But I could not come up with that third person, right? There's mm-hmm. plenty to choose from. I mean, I just couldn't there narrow is. it down, I should say, right, Mario? So we got plenty of guys out there. Some yeah. of the th- names I thought of for third, we'll go up through two and one here in a minute. Chicho hasn't been mm-hmm. gone, I guess, long enough maybe to kind of really – build up the stats. You know what I mean? Like he, he's, you know, he's playing great for RSL, unfortunately, but he went to Liga Mac. He's didn't have a huge impact there. Just didn't work out in terms of getting on the pitch enough. I don't know what they were thinking, but uh, then beta, obviously Steven beta short, one of our favorites had a good run with Colorado played very well there. Yes. Uh, Cal Jennings doing great in USL. I mean, I think, I think Cal fits very well at that in that league. Of course, he's a big time scorer. I think he's with Tampa Bay now. He had some success elsewhere in that league. We know Latif Blessing. We talked a little bit about him last week going to Houston. He's had success going to other places. Mark Anthony K was a huge part of LAFC for a while. Now he's been with a couple of teams. And Corey Baird, even Corey Baird, we're seeing do very well now. Yeah, with a couple of teams, he's actually mm-hmm. since moved on again. He's at Cincinnati now, but. So I couldn't come up with a third yet, but let me see if you agree with my first two, Mario. Okay. Uh, number two is a guy who hasn't been back that long, but he won the cup, unfortunately, is Diego Rossi, right? Okay. Massive player he, for LAFC. Goes on, yeah. does very well at Fenerbahce over in a very tough Turkish Super League. Comes back to Columbus and picks up a, a MLS Cup, unfortunately, against his former team, us. So... I he scored a he, lot of goals for us, Dave, yeah, and won you know, trophies here with I us mean, as well. Golden boot winner, yeah, just yeah. incredible, yeah, We're incredible doing it there player in Columbus, yeah, yeah incredible player. He, again, he might not have like hasn't been back long, you know, away from LAFC, if you will. Obviously, I, I don't consider going to another league. You know, he he was transferred. I don't consider that kind of part of this equation that much, honestly. But he did win an MLS Cup, so that's mm-hmm. huge. Yeah, But I think the number one guy is a guy we didn't see this weekend. And yeah. I think it showed for Nashville, and that's Walker Zimmerman. Uh, do you agree with those choices, or is there maybe a little bit different? It's pretty solid, pretty solid. Walker Walker has been, you know, defender of the year two times already. Yep. That is huge. Uh, he's one of the, the few defenders, American defenders, that are on a DP deal in MLS. Yep. You don't see that very often. You can always count on him uh, giving it his all, acting as a leader uh, on whatever team he is on. So that's that's a pretty good uh, number one there, Dave. And the way Gary Smith likes to play for Nashville, they need that anchor, that rock in the back because they're they're more defensive minded. Let's be realistic. You know that's that is more of their style. I mean, I know they have Hani Mukhtar who can score and do all, but they really rely on that defense. And that and, and kind of locking down teams and Walker Zimmerman's been a massive part of that, and has had. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny Mario. We were talking about it before. Like, I, I hate to say it this way, he was only with us for a couple of seasons. Yeah, like, he's been gone for a while now. <laughs> like, you don't think about like, it. Like, it feels like ten years ago, honestly, Dave. Does it really? Because it went fast yeah. for me. But he's been gone for like five. This is like his fifth season yeah. away. Yeah. Where I still see him. In the black and gold, I got to be honest with you. Every time I hear his name, you know, yeah, I still see him on the UCLA training ground whenever LEFC used to train over there. We used to go over there, uh, amazing campus. And I remember talking to him, like, I think in a hallway of like a classroom or something like that at UCLA and and do interviews in there. Those are great memories of the inaugural season and those players that were on that that roster was Walker Zimmerman, one of oh, our main Oh, that was a wild guys. time, wasn't it? When, yeah, it was. That first camp at U- UCLA before the training center was done. Yeah. And, like, everybody is so jazzed to be there. Everybody's Why is it always so sky up? blue? It's, it's brewing oh. blue at uh, the UCLA campus. I don't know how they do that. They managed to paint the sky blue, but, hey, yeah. it was <laughs> it beautiful. Perfect. It always looks perfect on that campus. I don't know how they do it. You're right. Yeah. 
And, yeah. and those campuses are just so – same with USC. They're so idyllic looking. But when we were there, it just was like popping the sky. Mm-hmm. The, everything was just like the air smelled sweeter, you know, just like – which doesn't usually happen sometimes, you know. With, you know, <laughs> uh, in L.A. in certain areas, the smog will get you sometimes. But it was just – yeah, and, and Walker was a big part of that, no doubt. But it, I think it's yeah. a testament how good he is. And that I still remember him in the black and gold, you know, because he's now been gone for a lot longer than he was with us, quite frankly. You know, he's 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 a mm-hmm. mainstay for a Nashville SC side that, of course, came into the league after us. And they've been, you know, doing very well, no doubt about it. So I think he's my – I can't figure out that third spot. So you know, he's your th- number one. Walker's your number one. Who's your number two? Is Rossi. Diego Rossi. Winning okay. the cup. Yeah. Even yeah. though he hasn't been there very long, you know, he's still got – you know, he's – there's been guys who have played mm-hmm. longer in MLS since they left us, obviously. But he's had – that's a big impact to come in and win, you know, because Columbus has done it before. But, boy, they you know they played well with him, certainly, too. Yeah. That third I want to talk spot, a little like bit Chicho, about, about Chicho Moose just hasn't the... been back long enough, if that makes yeah, sense. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, he's doing well. I mean, unfortunately, again, he's doing well for Salt Lake. But um, Let's talk yeah. about Musovski and and Seattle though, because Seattle is truly in in the middle of shifting here into a new era, and, and things are not looking pretty for them no. at the moment at all. Losing to San Jose, who's also at the bottom of the Western Conference table, right there with Seattle, they're right there at the bottom, and Seattle, you know, doesn't even have a win so far this season. So we're not used to seeing such a historically, you know, yeah. successful club being at the bottom, but they do well, have a solid player in Moose, uh, Danny Musovsky, to go along with Jordan Morris and Rui Diaz. So, let's yeah, but Dale Vega is injured. I mean, that was a big blow, yeah. no question. But here's the thing: big blow. Yes, this is how much I respect Seattle as an organization. Yeah, totally. Here's how much I respect them. Quite mm-hmm. frankly, if, if we didn't know that they're such a this is a garbage team, mm-hmm. they're bad. They're bad. There's no yeah. two ways about it. They're bad. That's it. And yes, De La Vega makes a huge difference. I, I'm not going to dispute that. We saw it even in a few minutes in the opener. They were a different team when he was out there. That's a big blow. But let's be realistic here. If you're relying on a 23 year old kid who gets injured, that that's going to derail your whole season when he only had played here for a few minutes in MLS. Again, you have to give deference to the organization at one level that they can turn it around. That's an organizational mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Respect is there. This is a garbage team right now. Bad. Yeah. And it, it feels is. weird to even say that, you know, uh, it feels absolutely. Weird to even talk about Seattle in that way. So like, um, I mean, they have, it's a world class all the way around, except for what's on the pitch right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. And the fact they play on turf, but we can have that argument for another day, but that's a world class organization, world class fans. Mm-hmm. They deserve yes. better. It, yeah. You're right. It's a good point, but it's a it's a bad team. It's a. It's I would a have to really go with bad. Team. I would have to go with Chicho Dave as my number three. I mean, yeah, Chicho. I, I, I was really hurt when he when he left. You know, and I think a lot of fans were hurt as well. Uh, he loved being here in L.A. The fans loved him a whole what lot. Happened? What happened? Yeah, to Liga Mackey, they, though. That guy yeah, should have lit know. that up. I mean, mm-hmm. he just never really gave him much of a, you know. And again, I wasn't, I mean, I love Pachuca, you know, but I wasn't watching like day to day how he's doing. Who knows the practice, you know, because, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, Chicho has his own style about things, right? He's his own kind of guy. And he, maybe it just didn't mesh because that just happens. Even with great players, sometimes they go to the wrong system or they go to a place where it just doesn't quite click. But I was trying I was a to watch that. I was keeping an eye on him, and uh, he just wouldn't be in there. He just wouldn't yeah. be on the pitch when I would check out the game. So uh, he just moves on to RSL, and and sure enough, he already has bagged a couple of big goals against us, like the Chicho that we know when he was here. So Yeah, that's frustrating. <laughs> it's too good. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to see it. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to go uh, – next up is the youth movement, Mario. But first, let's – actually, since we're talking RSL, I want to talk about this guy as part of the youth movement thing before we get to LAFC because they had some big yeah. games. Okay. This Fidel Barajas, mm-hmm. uh, you could have put him in, you know, we have the let him cook segment we're not doing today. Could have been yeah. him. You know, you you could talk about the youth movement, which we're about to with LAFC. This is part of the youth movement in MLS, 17 years old. He doesn't turn, I think he turns 18 in like two weeks. Holy cow. If you saw this kid play, especially in this most recent match, he's at Vancouver, right? That turf up there. Not an easy place to go. 
I mean, he was dominant. This kid, 17 going on, you know, 27 the way he plays. Two assists, could have had a goal or two. Frankly, a couple of chances that really were amazing. I got to tell you, there's a reason the United States and Mexico are fighting for this kid when it comes to the national team. Because I, I might be willing to put on the, uh, you want to pick like a, a Mexican broadcaster that represents El Tree? I might even put on some gloves and get in a boxing ring to fight for Fidel Barajas to play for the United <laughs> States of America, which happens to be my national. Because this kid is the real deal. Yeah. Holy cow, Mario. I when mean, you see a lot of talented kids out there, you know, you see the class and the oh, touch sure. and the pat, but do they have the confidence? And that's rare when you have a kid that has everything and the confidence and you see him out there going after goal, making the right passes, picking up assists, like you said, that is whenever you know you got something special. And there's a confidence that can lead to some false bravado almost as you play. True. Mm -hmm. Not because it's a bad thing necessarily. What I mean by that is false bravado in your play at a certain time where you really can't pull it off yet, but you're yeah. such a confident, talented player you're still young, though, and you can't quite get there yet. You think you can, mm -hmm. and and you should have that attitude. This kid can. Like, yeah. he doesn't have – he just has bravado. He doesn't have false bravado. Or the confidence to make the wrong decision, you know. Yes. Instead, of, instead of making the right pass, you take a shot because you're overconfident. That's another yes. thing. And, it, and, and, again, that's not a bad thing necessarily in and of itself. It's just another little hurdle that a young player sometimes has to get up. This, this kid is just too good. He really is. Yeah. I, I. There's a reason that both national teams need. I'll tell you what. I don't care if this kid's playing at RSL. You know, there's so many U.S. men's national team fans. We won't get into it too much here that you have to play in Europe and cannot play in MLS. It's ridiculous. It's an utterly ridiculous mindset. I'll, I'll tell you what. This kid wants to play for the United States. He can, he can find a, a spot in my best 11 for the U.S. Anytime he wants, I'll take my chances. I'm sorry. I know we got some good players, and we got some great players playing at big club. I don't care. I don't if he's at RSL or where he came from the Charleston Battery in the lower division. Fine, he can play for my U.S. national team anytime, and I and I'll play. I'll put him in my starting eleven, Mario, and we'll go play anybody we want. I mean, I'm sorry, this guy, he is the real deal. So, and it leads into the youth movement for the U.S. Speaking of real deals, holy cow for the LAFC. Yeah. Well, we saw some. Perform. I mean, David Martinez is another guy who does not have the false bravado. <laughs> he can just, exactly. uh, he fits my dad. We always talk about my dad. He was like, yes. who is this kid? You yes. Know, like, I love it. If he's got your dad's stamp of approval, he's something. like, yes. this guy can play. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I mean, and you know, it just, you, it just oozes out of the guy with the ball at his feet and yes. another good performance there. And I wrote down, wow. That's mm -hmm. my only note I had for the game as I rewatched it and, the assist, we all saw it. You know, if you hadn't seen it, if you haven't seen the highlights of that, if you're a fan of MLS and you haven't watched, you know, we got a lot of fans of MLS listening to the show, watching it on YouTube. Go see the highlights of that assist he had because so many guys yeah. and just overcooked that pass just a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not by much, but it has to be inch perfect. And mm -hmm. if you overcook it just by a tad, that defender is going to get a foot on it or it's going to go past your, you know, at this case, it was. Obviously, uh, Oliveira, Christian Oliveira, yeah. making a good play on it. Who, and he had a lot to do. He still finished brilliantly. That was the best goal I've seen him score for yeah. LAFC. But that pass has got to be perfect. And it was. Dave, in my notes, I wrote blockbuster football. David yeah. Martinez is blockbuster football. Mm -hmm. Anytime he has the ball at his feet, you can expect something exciting. He's uh, fast, creative. He's confident. He's also very smart, like we're talking about. For his age, he uh, you know, he has one thing in mind when he when he's on the pitch, going for the goal. But yeah. he also knows that he can make the right pass when he needs to, like he saw in that Christian Oliveira uh, assist on Saturday night. But also, Dave, off of that pass, which helped Christian Oliveira score that goal, when he made the pass, David Martinez quickly made the run. Yeah, so just he in case, made absolutely. the run. Yeah. So the defenders are kind of saying, okay, well, David's making the run, but Oliveira has the ball and he has a good chance at goal. So there's a little hesitancy there of, do I go for David or do I go for Oliveira along with the keeper as well? So 
that's dangerous right there for, yeah, for op- great oppositions. Yeah. It's a very good point because maybe maybe in this case it wasn't the case, but maybe if he makes that run another time when he puts that pass off, it actually opens up a bigger lane to shoot. Yeah. Just in case, you know, because then it's not a block shot with so much traffic around, or you know, if he doesn't mm-hmm. make the run and everything's congested, his defender doesn't knows he's not going anywhere. It's a very good point. Very good point. I thought Nathan Ordaz got some nice minutes. And then, oh, by the way, he jumps on the pitch on Sunday, and I was watching, and he scored a really nice goal for LAFC, nice. too. Nice. So, I mean, really nice finish. So, good job for Nathan Ordaz just to keep, you know, this guy has just got to – I know he's 20. He should be able to run all day, every day. You know, I get it. He's in great shape, so it's not like – but still got to go out there and perform a day after your – you know, so. And I got to say, I got to give a little shout-out, too. He's not been getting a ton of minutes yet because the schedule is just one game a week. So the starters have been, you know, that's basically had the same starting mm-hmm. 11 and they're playing a boatload of minutes, obviously, because, you, you know, you have plenty of Eric Duenas came in. And what yeah. I like about him, Mario, I'm starting to notice he's getting he's getting to be a little bit like stronger. Certainly yeah. as he gets older, you know, like he's, he's yeah. finally, become, you know, he's, he's a kid. I mean, he's a young man. He's just, you know. Very, you know, still just growing and everything else, but he's getting soccer stronger on the mm-hmm. pitch too, and you can yep. just see it. He, there's nothing about Eric Duenas that you ever thought like he doesn't, you know, he's doesn't not sure if he knows how to play mentally or no. He's always had it. It's he's just still a matter of just, finest. Yeah, just catching up, you know, just physically a little bit with some of the physicality mm-hmm. of it, and he's yeah. starting to. And I kind of noticed that. And Nashville's not a team that, you know. It, anybody would consider a softer, you know, like less physical team. They're they don't mess around, and he was right in the mix. So that was good mm-hmm. to see. I love that. Yeah. Great stuff there. Uh, excellent performance from a newcomer in MLS. All of a sudden, Hugo Kuiper is the big signing for Chicago. I know he had the one goal that, from the penalty spot, but two straight games now on the score sheet. I don't know that it was like the greatest performance overall, like, but it was just something that stuck stood out to me because there's no way Chicago Fire are going to go anywhere if he doesn't have a monster year, and it's not all on him because he's got to be fed the ball and maybe more service. But you know, Mario, if you sign yeah. a number nine for that kind of money in MLS, totally. yeah, right. I mean, you just mm-hmm. they have to carry you on the score sheet. You can't just have a guy who's you know seven goals and four assists. You know, like you just. No, <laughs> they're not going anywhere if that happens. So Dave, a real a real dangerous DP number nine is such a special thing to have on your team in MLS. Yeah, that is Hugo Kuipers. This guy won the Belgian Golden Boot uh, before, and he's starting to rack up goals in MLS. You better watch out. He's only twenty six years old. Uh, he's someone to keep an eye on. And luckily, we don't have to face him this year, so we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also like you can just see as you watch him that if he gets the service, he's going to score. Like he's yeah. not a guy who like you're like, eh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. He might be yeah. good. He might, you know, might not translate to MLS. Maybe. No, If he, I, I believe even just watching him, you know, what, four or five games that I have, if he gets the service, he puts yeah. it in the back of the net. You know, like he knows what to do with scouting. it. Yeah. Now I'm not saying he's going to get enough service necessarily because Chicago's got <laughs> that's got the work question. to do. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's it it won't be a Hugo Kuipers problem in my estimation. So mm-hmm. around the rest of MLS, Mario, you know, I was watching this. Uh, we talked about RSL a little bit with Barajas kind of dominating at times during that game. They come back and beat Vancouver on the road. Big win for RSL two one, and it just got me thinking about Vancouver, where, and I think you'll agree. They give us fits. This is a team mm-hmm. that's hard to beat. Oh yeah, right. But I think they like are hitting that level. And I'm not again. Vancouver's a fine, you know, playoff type. They they have players that are just you're getting about all you can out of these particular players. If that makes sense, like they don't have that next. Ugh, you know, like they're never mm-hmm. going to quite. I don't think Vancouver has the roster right now where they're going to be like, whoa, we can threaten to win the West here. Look out. Because just too many of these games happen to them. Grab Mm -hmm. a lead. Can't hang on at home. Again, not a bad team. Just they got guys on this roster. Some of them, they're paying some good money. They got designated players. Just not at that next level, if that makes sense, right? They're kind of hitting their, bumping their head on, okay, this is who they are at this point. And I don't know if it's enough 
frankly, I don't believe it is this roster for Vancouver. Again, doesn't mean they can't cause you problems because they've caused us problems in the past. But what do you see of Vancouver? Is that how you kind of read this? Like, like they're good. Uh, they're yeah, not they're good. Anything I'm, better than that, you know? Goalkeeper is good. They always give us fits, even at even at BMO Stadium. So yeah, I mean, they're. I can see that, Dave. I guess they need they need a little extra blood in there, something new in there to take them over the hump. Yeah, and be a real, real contender, not just a good team that's going to give you fits or be in the middle or just make the playoffs. They need a little something extra to be at the top of like, watch out. These guys have a chance to come out, you know? Well, one player who has that, I think is, you know, we talked about Emil Forsberg joining New York Red Bull. They just yeah. needed Lewis Morgan to be healthy. Holy cow, this guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and he had the hat trick. I know Inter Miami's missing play. Everybody was missing, as we said. But it's not about just that one game hat trick. Lewis Morgan gets it done. If he's not injured, this guy is for real. Like, Kind of reminds me, looks like a little bit like a Casey Affleck, if you look at him. He can be like, Casey Affleck could play <laughs> Lewis Morgan in a movie. If, True. Uh, Casey Affleck's a lot older than Lewis Morgan. He'd have to, you know, but you'd have to <laughs> suspend disbelief a little bit. But this kid is a difference maker, no doubt. Uh, one guy that I saw that, to me, it's an interesting sign, if you will, is Jonathan Rodriguez, of course, the Uruguayan that we all know from Liga Mekis, mm -hmm. who's at times lit it up. Yeah, Lee Gamecki always scores wherever he is. I believe he won a scoring title down there for uh, what Cruz Azul. Uh, goal score, no doubt. He comes into Portland now. They got drubbed, but he scores that goal, Mario. Maybe he gets them, you know, gets it going that way at least, even in a loss. Does he really make make Portland that much better though? Where do you see that kind of like? He doesn't want to be called by that nickname, and I'm going to respect the man, but Jonathan Rodriguez, is that the kind of signing that for Portland? Yeah, you know, he's the type of guy that also uh, needs the service as well. And yeah. he, if he does get that, he will score. He's been scoring everywhere he's been. Like you said, in Mexico, he scored in his first game in Portland. So I think he's definitely uh, somebody that can help out if the rest of the team picks up and combines with him. But also, Dave, uh, I did want to talk about Luis Morgan, where he he played in Miami, right? And yeah. Miami, this has been this has been something that I've been noticing about Miami is that when there is rotation, sometimes they don't give it their effort, or are they just not that good without some of their main players? I mean, I know Messi's a big guy to not have in your in your roster in that game, but I mean, the effort just seemed like it was not there at all and you just can't do that knowing that there's going to be rotation down the line and that game was just awful honestly it was an awful game for inter miami yeah and new york red bulls they didn't even have forsberg like you said earlier so imagine if they have forsberg and they go up against inter miami so it was a pretty yeah, decent I, win for for new york and miami needs to step it up if they're in a uh, middle of a rotation a couple of things here now you got to remember though this was the worst probably well Toronto FC was far worse last year. This was one of the worst teams in the league yeah. before Messi got there, right? Yes, and course, indeed. They, you know, and Messi and, and Busquets and Alba, great. You know, and now this year Luis Suarez can go a long way with helping. But this was a this was a bad team before mm -hmm. you know Messi and friends got there. So there's still some work to be done. Now they've overhauled that roster. I think I kind of tend to believe that was a a game where they're missing a boatload of players, not just Messi, not just one or two. But Suarez was in there, and Suarez yeah. was like. He got the ball at kickoff from the ref. The referee handed him the ball, and Suarez was like, "Are you serious? Like we're gonna play in this oh, rain? Yeah, it was like a he did not want to be there. Yeah, it was hilarious. Yeah, they didn't want to be there. But you know, yeah. Mario, we talked about it too. There are like much like every sport, except for maybe mm -hmm. football, the NFL. There are just gonna be games on your schedule. You're just gonna get beat and beat bad in MLS. Yeah, there's 34 regular season games. You see it in every other sport. The worst team in the league goes into you know Dodger Stadium and takes two out of you know three or three out of four from the Dodgers and pounds them. Doesn't happen often, but it's going to or or you know the Dodgers lose six out of eight or seven out of ten. Some you're just gonna have it. Like and it, I think it was just one of those games for Inter Miami. I could be wrong, but it was just one of those where one or two times a year, no matter how good you are in MLS. <laughs> It's just going to get thrown right back in your face. 
It was evident and, on, on yeah, the weekend. Yeah, I mean, and that just, I think that's what happened there. Um, here's another final question for me. Can, L- can LA Galaxy outscore everyone? Because they're going to have to. And they did. They were down 2 0 against Sporting and really had a nice comeback. And boy, at times they look unstoppable, but they also can't stop anybody. So it's going to have to be a 4 3 kind of year for them. And that doesn't usually last either. You've got to be able to stop some teams every now and again. So that's my only question with them. But, you know, they're getting the job I, done now, and it's going to be tough on April 6th. Can I ask answer your question with a question? Uh, <laughs> just like we asked, uh, is this the real LAFC earlier in the episode? Yeah. Is this the real Galaxy we are seeing right now at the moment? Well, when you have enough talent offensively, Goals are replicable, right? You can score. Mm -hmm. If you're a good enough team, you're going to score some. Now, you're going to get shut out. I mean, you're just, it's going to happen. But it looks like they can do it offensively. 13 goals, I believe, on the season. Yeah. I mean, they're, I think they're they're the top scoring team per game. They are. I don't know about, yeah. They haven't played as many as, you know, but, um, but they can't stop anybody. You know, and mm-hmm. it, maybe it's a it's a piece of the style. Remember, we saw it a little bit with Bob Bradley's style. We didn't win a lot of, you know, four nil. You're going to give up some goals when you want to push forward. That's just the way it is. So it might not be all you know, terror. You know, all their defenses fault or whatever. But yeah, you were down two nil too. Shame on Sporting yeah. Kansas City at home up two nil. Oh, and don't wow. even get you know get nothing Can't out happen. of that game. That cannot happen. So yeah, that it, yeah. it almost is more of a. Look to the other team in that sense. I mean, true. You know, and the Galaxy are doing all the things they need to to get these results. But wow, Sporting Kansas City, that's shame on you, no doubt about it. And not to look past Colorado for our next game, but our next home game is Saturday, April 6th. And that's another chapter there of the LA Derby, Classic Angelino, whatever you want to call it. Uh, But best believe both teams will be more than ready for this one. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a very good game. No doubt yeah. about it. I'm already looking forward to it. But you're right. No uh, no stepping over any team in MLS because that's when they'll bite you. <laughs> it just somehow happens mm-hmm. that way. So LAFC have only to get ready for Colorado. And speaking of which, that matchup's coming up on Saturday. Uh, by the way, 12.30 p.m. Pacific for the pregame. If you want to listen to us, our work on 710 ESPN and the ESPN LA app. One o'clock also on Apple TV, the MLS season pass, if you want to watch it. Our audio is only available on that for the home matches. This is a road game at Dick's Sporting Goods Park in Colorado. Commerce, I think it's called. Commerce, Colorado, wherever they're at. So, yeah, not an easy task. Always tough up in that altitude. Let's not look ahead to anything but winning that match, right? Absolutely. Mario, episode six in the books, man. It flies by, brother. Just great stuff. Yeah. Hopefully, LAFC can build off of that uh, 5-0 win You know, last Saturday. Have a good performance in Colorado. Get a result out there because uh, the next one is the big one, and you got to have that rhythm heading into that. So let's see what happens in Colorado. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go black and gold. Thank you for joining us. Again, if you uh, want to leave comments wherever you either watch it on YouTube or if you're listening, you can hit us up on social media as well. I'm at Talk Soccer. He is I am Mario Ruiz. Feel free. We love it. We love all the comments and all the stuff. And the show's going great. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.